On this day, October 5th, we declare World Postpartum Hemorrhage Day. It's official. World Postpartum Hemorrhage Day has been inaugurated at the FIGO 2025 conference in Cape Town. Every woman, everywhere, needs good quality and evidence-based care. Something else happened in that hall. The unveiling of new global guidelines to prevent, diagnose and treat postpartum hemorrhage, a lifeline for mothers everywhere. We all need to be guided by guidelines. And I think all of us can attest. I think PPH had how many documents? They were close to how many? Different documents. Can anybody tell me from the audience? We had eight documents, honestly. PPH, or severe bleeding after childbirth, is the number one killer of mothers globally. The discussions and pledges at the FIGO conference signal hope, a turning point in the fight to stop women from dying of causes we already know how to prevent. I call this a polycrisis. It's a silent collision of crisis, a generational crisis where children are growing without mothers. Grandmothers are forced back to motherhood and the cycle of poverty and pain continues. It's a community crisis, poverty deepening. It's a dignity crisis, women dying in silence unseen and unheard. It's an economic crisis for the nation, but also for the family. But most importantly, it's a trust crisis. Will communities keep on trusting a system that is failing them? It is ultimately a justice crisis, a human rights violation of women and girls' lives. When you look at the information, in the data, in Africa, we still have a big problem of postpartum that was shared during this FIGO conference, and we're coming together to make sure that no one everywhere, anywhere, dies of preventable postpartum hemorrhage. The conference hall crackled with energy, powerful speeches, bold truths, and a challenge to the very experts in the room. So we need to stop talking to ourselves a take of an approach called multi-sector next year and the year after, I want to see a different crowd. The gynecologist, the pediatrician, the financiers, the technologists, the agriculturalists. We've got to broaden and throw the box. That was launched at the but I also want to hear the community's voice themselves talking with us and not us at them. It was clear, too often, health experts talk to each other, not to the people whose lives depend on their knowledge. I was elected as a senator in, Mo in Kenya from the county of Makweni for 10 years. And for those 10 years, being a vocal politician, I never heard about PPH. So I'm a recent convert. And here is a question for you. Think about it and answer it honestly. Out of the numbers that have been mentioned, 355 out of 100 live births in Kenya, of 400 in some place in Africa, West, East, which woman in your life would you want to go because of PPH? I'm sure there is none. None, I imagine, is your response to. On the part of Makoweni governor, he took the PPH cause and ran with it. As a result? We introduced his table cabetosin through our partner's path, Japago, Unitaid. We piloted his table cabetosin. In a country where, in an asal area like Makoweni, where oxytocin it's difficult to store because of its uh, cold chain management. We piloted his table cabotacin. 2023, no woman in Makweni died because of PPH. <clears throat> 2024, two were reported to have died of PPH, but not in a public facility. So again, points out to the partnerships that are required, even with the private facilities, to ensure that we can protect women. And then...
came this moment a man standing to speak for all men. Ladies and gentlemen, here is a man representing all men to say we are sorry to all the women for the sins we have committed against you. In the end, the fight against PPH is more than medicine. It's about will, the will to listen, to act, and to make sure no woman dies giving life. For the Frontera Originals, I am Anne Mawathe.